In a short to medium term, Neuralink is really just going to um, help cure uh, brain injuries. Hey everyone, welcome back to Neuropod. There's been quite a bit of news related to Elon, and he recently made some comments about Neuralink, so I figured I'd put together another update style episode. This one's going to include info about Elon's recent statements about Neuralink while accepting an award in Germany, and a rumor he's going to move to Texas. I'll talk about a new breakthrough made by DeepMind, and lastly I want to share some thoughts on an article from CNBC saying that Neuralink has hurdles to overcome. Elon Musk accepted the Axel Springer Award about a week ago in Germany. According to the Axel Springer website, the award is given to outstanding personalities who are particularly innovative and who generate and change markets, influence culture, and at the same time, face up to their responsibility to society. Elon fits this description pretty darn well, and a couple notable Repire recipients include Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos. Fortunately, in 2020, Elon's gotten a little more recognition for his and his team's accomplishments. He was named Fortune Magazine's 2020 Business Person of the Year, and he's also on every single one of Forbes 30 Under 30 lists. Okay, that was a bad joke, but I really am happy to see he's getting more of the respect he should. Throughout the day, the hosts asked Elon a series of questions relating to all of his ventures. I particularly enjoyed them asking Elon simply how he manages all these companies. His response was a quietly confident and overly humble statement, saying that Neuralink's a small company, very small. And when they talked about Boring Company, he said that's also small. Although his responses are true, it's also true that 99% of people would never dare try to create a company the size of Neuralink, which if you're a consistent Neuropod listener, you probably know the team is a mere 120-ish employees versus Tesla's 60,000 plus employee count. Later, he continued his explanation of Neuralink's ambitions with the following. Help cure uh, brain injuries, mm-hmm. and brain and spine injuries. So it's like if, if somebody is a, in fact, off, off post, uh, Implanted devices in humans will be for uh, quadriplegics, tetraplegics, allowing them to control a computer or a phone just using the mind. Elon often talks about how we should have things to wake up for and look forward to. For me, this future where Neuralink can send and receive enough neural information to and from the brain to help paralyzed patients move prosthetic limbs, that future is incredibly exciting. Not only is Neuralink working towards this functionality, but they should also be able to help eliminate the primary negative effects of Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease. Think about the frustration of a child when their grandparent or parent can no longer recognize them or remember prior experiences. That situation just destroys me. A potential future where this frustration no longer exists, that's inspiring. I hope if you feel the same way, you'll help educate those around you about the potential of the team and the tech at Neuralink. The conversation primarily revolved around Tesla at the award ceremony, given the Berlin Gigafactory is starting to make more progress. If you're curious about the times Elon discussed Tesla, I recommend listening to Rob Maurer with his channel called Tesla Daily. Of course, Elon's endeavors don't stop there. The Starlink portion of SpaceX is starting to generate more headlines, as it's becoming increasingly likely that they'll be able to connect people around the globe with incredibly high speed and reliable internet within the next several years. Likewise, the actual mission of SpaceX to establish a multi-planetary species on Mars is also making good progress. The launch of SpaceX's most powerful vehicle, Starship, should occur plus or minus a few days of me recording this episode. Lastly, it wouldn't surprise me if the boring company's tunnels and bricks are laying the foundation for other larger construction projects down the road. At the end of the interview portion of the award ceremony, in typical Elon fashion, he took the time to thank all the great teams at each of his companies. But I I do want to just say to uh, acknowledge the great people at uh, at Tesla and SpaceX, Neuralink, Boring Company. Um, Really, I I accept this award uh, on on your behalf for for all the great things that that you've done. So um, super, super appreciated. Um, But I really want to acknowledge very strongly the people at the companies who made it happen. Okay, so moving on from the award, There have recently been some rumors that Elon's going to move to Texas. This move wouldn't be too surprising, 
given that he's already spending a day or two most weeks in Texas with the Boca Chica launch site for SpaceX. Also, the gigantic Texas Gigafactory, and potentially Terra Factory by the time it's all finished being constructed, is being built on the east side of Austin. And of course, last but not least, it's highly likely Neuralink is going to be constructing some facility or factory close to Austin, as there's a job opening on the Neuralink website for the head of construction. The posting says, Seeking an experienced, dedicated, and well-organized head of construction to join our facilities team working in Austin, Texas, and Fremont, California. Other things that align with the rumor are that earlier this year, at the beginning of May, Elon tweeted about, quote, selling almost all physical possessions. Just over a week later, he tweeted about his unhappiness with some policies and structure in Alameda County and California. On May 9th, he wrote, quote, Frankly, this is the final straw. Tesla will now move its HQ and future programs to Texas, Nevada immediately. If we even retain Fremont manufacturing activity at all, it will be dependent on how Tesla is treated in the future. Tesla is the last car maker left in California. Based on how things have shaped up since then, I think it's pretty clear that this was a bluff. Or like all Elon's bluffs, they're actually semi-bluffs. There are probably dozens of things he's considering, but it wouldn't surprise me if he does really believe Texas allows for more, quote, freedoms than California. The tax consequences of living and operating in California, where state personal income tax is the highest, are also considerably less favorable than in Texas, where state income tax doesn't exist. I believe, based on how Elon is compensated for most of his work, these tax brackets wouldn't matter much at all. But the corporate taxes are also significantly lower in Texas, at a standard business tax rate of 1% versus the 8% in California. The question becomes, do these factors, plus traffic, and the other factors that I'm not considering, outweigh the good things that California does have to offer? Overall, it probably won't matter too much, because he'll probably indicate his primary place of residence, get the tax advantage, and continue his nomadic lifestyle, where he's constantly splitting time between Los Angeles, Fremont, Sparks, Nevada, Berlin, Shanghai, Austin, and Cape Canaveral in Florida. And maybe by this time next year, we'll add Giga Midwest, or Australia, or Africa to the list. Now that I spent plenty of time on a rumor, it's time to move on to recent events that have actually already occurred. The first story of note is one that broke out of the company named DeepMind. They've been recognized for a breakthrough in solving the quote-unquote protein folding problem. I'm not entirely sure what the ins and outs of the breakthrough are, but based on my initial research, it looks like this is actually a pretty well-known problem in the scientific community, and this is the most significant publicly acknowledged breakthrough. The protein folding problem is that cells in all living things are comprised of 3D proteins, and although the scientific community understands that these 3D proteins can be unraveled into a string of amino acids, they haven't known how to go backwards. So they don't know how to take the information from a string of amino acids and predict the 3D shape of a protein. This is no longer the case after DeepMind's development of an artificial intelligence system called AlphaFold. In line with the first statement on their company website, DeepMind has been able to quote, research and build safe artificial intelligence systems. Their goal is to solve intelligence and advanced scientific discovery for all. The AlphaFold system analyzed millions of proteins and was able to reach a substantial threshold for predicting the 3D structure of a viral protein. In part of the YouTube video press release, a team member referenced the implications of this breakthrough. He says, The implications are immense, from how disease progresses, how you can discover new drugs, it's endless. I believe this is one intermediate step of many for how the entire field of biology is working hand in hand with technology. By using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and other techniques, the field is going to become more knowledgeable about the science related to the brain and our bodies. Simultaneously, 
Engineers can help scientists find the data while also using the data that is available. By being able to better predict how diseases progress, new solutions can be developed for preventing brain disorders like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and dementia. After their news release, Elon congratulated them on their progress on Twitter. Next is an article that broke from CNBC. I'm curious about their timing here. This past Saturday, they released an article with the headline, Elon Musk's brain computer interface company Neuralink has money and buzz, but hurdles too. It feels like there was no reason or spark to release an article like this, other than maybe they just wanted to cover something about Elon that wasn't Tesla or SpaceX related. The article outlines the differences between Elon's prior successes with Tesla and SpaceX versus the upcoming hurdles with Neuralink. My takeaway was that many people think Neuralink will have a tougher time making it through the science-related challenges than Tesla or SpaceX did because, quote, there is still so much that even neuroscientists do not know about the brain. A professor from the University of Pittsburgh says, quote, the difference is rocket science and the science behind electric cars have been written. However, the brain is where that begins to fall apart. Brain science is largely unknown. It's hard to out-engineer the brain if you don't understand how the brain works. To say that this is the reason the team's going to have more trouble with Neuralink doesn't feel right to me. I could not disagree more with the idea that you need to fully understand the science to make engineering useful. Engineering is based on the things that are known and can lead to scientific discoveries. Then, the next engineering solutions will be built on the foundation of whatever science is known then. From a business perspective, I believe that this is the reason they'll be able to leapfrog everyone in the industry even faster than Tesla or SpaceX has. At the end of the article, the author includes a note from one of Neuralink's original team members, Dr. Philip Sabis. I agree with his comments. He says, being able to understand the brain's origin and the organization of neurons in fine detail in a way that would satisfy a neuroscientist to the core, that's a separate problem. And we don't need to solve all of those scientific problems in order to make progress. That'll wrap it up for this episode. Thank you all for listening. Please like, share, and follow at Neuropod on Twitter. And if you're feeling extra generous, please also comment below the video any thoughts you have about Neuralink. Hope to have you again next Wednesday. Thanks.